Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today on the healing bench we have this mp3 player that belongs to one of my friends and the complaint is that it uh, doesn't work. Uh, I'm guessing that it might have fall because if I shake it so you can hear that there's some noise coming in so I'm suspecting a loose wire or something like that but let's jump right in and we'll see what we got inside so there are a couple of screws on the bottom and it also seems as if someone tried to open this already so i'm not really sure what's we gonna what we're gonna find inside Okay, so that leaves the speaker, but I think we can just pull it out because I'm guessing this would also gonna need to be opened from the side somehow. But before we do that and we continue with the repair, let me thank today's sponsor, which is Altium Designer. As someone who's always juggling electronic projects, I found that Altium Designer is the perfect companion. It's like having a PCB design assistant who is as intuitive as it is intelligent, helping me zig through designs with precision, whether it's schematic capture or laying out a board. But the game changer for me, it's all about Altium 365. It is this incredible electronics development platform that Altium has seamlessly integrated. Whether your team is down the hall or across the globe, you can work together in real time. It's like being in the same room, even when you're not, and that's a lifesaver when it comes to beating those tight deadlines. Plus, there is something truly comforting about having all my data managed and sync within the cloud-based Altium 365 environment. It's secure, clear, and organized. I never have to second guess if I'm working on the latest version of a design, and with a direct line to components and supply chain info, it's like having an extra set of eyes to make sure everything is just right. If you're into PCB design and want to streamline your process, experience efficiency and collaborate like a pro, you should definitely check out Altium Designer and get on the Altium 365 train too. Visit the link in the video description to get a free trial and a 25% discount on any license. Okay, so let's see if we can remove this mesh from the side. Okay, so there are some screws that are hidden. I don't want to damage this, so I'm going carefully to peel it off. Okay. Let's see what we got. some more screws that we need to go into that's the battery and this is probably going to the speaker on the other side And here is the board out together with the battery and I was looking at the board to see for any obvious issues or any obvious flaws, something like uh, watermarks or any burn components, but I'm not able to see anything. So I'm going to inspect the battery first and see what's the voltage on that with uh, my meter. Yeah, so I'm not getting any voltage out of the battery, so that probably is the issue. Now, I don't have a replacement battery to try with, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to dis disassemble this one. And I have some salvaged uh, batteries. I'm guessing that this one is an 18650, so 
I'm gonna replace it with a new one. I mean, with one with a salvaged battery. And I'm gonna reuse the protection circuit that we have here. Okay, let's remove all of the stickers. So I'm gonna remove the negative first and now let's measure the battery directly once again just to confirm okay so the battery seems to be at two and a half volts which is okay let's try and connect the charger see how it behaves okay so I have it connected through my power meter and it's not drawing any current. Okay, so I looked at the PCB more closely in the area of the connector that we used to charge and I'm not sure how well this translates in the video, but both of the tracks here going to this pad They seem as if they are lifted from the PCB, so I'm not really sure if they are making a connection there. I'm gonna try to measure, but that's gonna be some finicky work. And yeah, I mean, I'm pressing a bit on the connector here, and you can see it lifting out of the PCB. So we'll need to try and remove that and see if we can reflow it again I don't have another one to replace it so we're gonna have to go with this one but I'm gonna add some fresh solder and we'll see what we can do Okay, so I have the connector out and this is definitely a job asking for a, mic a microscope, but I don't have one, so we'll have to do. And I also uh, cleaned up the pads to better see what's going on. So uh, by the looks of it, both of the tracks that we had here that were going up are broken and uh, both of them are going to this test pad here. Uh, that goes also on the other side so my plan is to now resolder this here on the board because that's what actually holding it on the bottom and i'm gonna add a bit of fresh solder here and reheat the uh, connector from the bottom as i did to remove it and then i'm gonna run a piece of wire from here to the uh, two uh, pins here on the side hopefully that goes well let's see what happens uh, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna be able to film from it because it's all on a weird angles but I'll try to share as much as possible And there's that and that seems to have worked now the only way to try it out is to connect the battery and see if it's gonna take any charge so let's 
let's see. No. I don't see any current going. Let's try and measure some voltages. Ah, but there's a blue light. It's alive. Probably it's not drawing enough or the battery is not taking enough current. But yeah, current seems to be going up now. Let's try and disconnect. Okay, so we seem to have fixed the connector issue, but the battery is still not charging. And if we measure it here, it stays at 2.52, although I have it plugged in. But um, I know that the connector works because previously we were not getting any response. And now if I turn it on, we'll see that at least previously it operated. That's a bit weird. Okay, there we go. And now we're drawing quite a lot of current. And now it's even charging. So I guess I didn't have it plugged all the way in. Maybe it's... Okay, so it seems that the issue is a bit intermittent still. Uh, I'm probably going to need to look for a connector to to replace it. Or I'm going to look again, see if maybe I don't have that leg soldered properly. Okay, so going over it with the soldering iron again seems to did the trick. And now... If we plug it in, we'll see the red light. It's drawing about 340 milliamps. Uh, that means it's charging and we can confirm that on the battery itself. If we measure the, the voltage of the battery, we should see it higher than... So it's now at 3.6 and it's going up. So 3.62. I'm going to leave this to charge for a while and then I'm going to reassemble it back in the case so we can try it out and see if it works. Okay, so I have it connected just enough so I can try it out with the speaker and everything. <laughs> And it comes to life. Bluetooth mode. Okay. Let's figure out if we can scan it and connect on it on the phone. Okay. So it appears as a Q3. Okay, so we seem to be connected. Uh, let me try something that's not gonna mess up with my copyright on the video. Okay, and the best way is to show you one of my one. previous Today videos. On the healing bench, we have a set of three LEDs. And you can see that that works. And with that, I can declare this as fixed. I'm gonna reassemble the whole thing and give it back to, to my friend. And with that, I hope that you like this video. I'm going to reassemble the whole the speaker and give it back to my friend. If you have any questions, leave them down in the video comments. Make sure to subscribe to see me do more repairs and more projects in the future. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.